Hello lovelies, in this video we're going to be looking at enzyme action and the theories behind that. So the lock and key mechanism, the induced fit model, and then we're going to be looking at the factors that affect this as well. So temperature, pH and concentration. Enzyme action. Enzymes are proteins with a tertiary structure that forms the active site. The active site has a specific shape. This means it can bind to only one substrate, so it is specific to that substrate. We say that the active site has a complementary shape, so it matches the substrate. Think about it like puzzle pieces fitting together. Because the shape of the active site is complementary to the substrate, they can bind. And when they bind, they form an enzyme substrate complex. This language is really key. You're going to see us use the word complementary and specific, substrate, active site, and enzyme substrate complex a lot throughout this topic. It's important not to get the words complementary and specific mixed around. So both enzymes here, A and B, have specific shaped active sites. This is because they can only bind to one substrate. Now, if we're going to use the word complementary, we would talk about enzyme A being complementary to substrate 2, whereas enzyme B is complementary to substrate 1. And they are only complementary to those substrates because they fit together. Their active sites and the substrates can fit and bind and form an enzyme substrate complex. The model or theory of enzyme action has changed over time as we've developed our understanding through getting new molecular techniques. So this is an example of how science develops. The original model was known as the lock and key. You might have looked at this at GCSE. So it's where the shape of the active site is exactly complementary, like a lock, to the substrate, which is like the key. They fit together exactly, forming an enzyme substrate complex. The more recent model is called induced fit. This has come from new molecular evidence, which suggests that the active site is not exactly complementary to the shape of the substrate. The active site of the enzyme actually changes shape to fit around the substrate after they collide, and that forms the enzyme substrate complex. So they're not exactly the same to start with, but once binding starts to occur, the active site of the enzyme changes its shape to fit around the substrate. Enzymes speed up the rate of chemical reactions by acting as biological catalysts. This means they are unchanged and they do not get used up in the reaction. They can catalyze metabolic reactions, so for example things like respiration, inside cells, or they can work outside of cells. For example, in digestion, they work in the lumen of the small intestine. This is known as extracellular. Enzymes function as catalysts and speed up reactions by lowering the activation energy required for a reaction to take place. For example, they can allow a reaction to happen at a lower temperature than without the enzyme. If they're breaking down a molecule, they can weaken the bonds, which allows them to be broken more easily. Or if they're making a molecule, they can force molecules that would normally repel each other together in order to make sure that they react together faster. So you can see an energy profile here. So without an enzyme, the activation energy is higher than with the enzyme, and you see the curve is slightly lower down. Factors affecting the rate of enzyme-controlled reactions. First, let's look at temperature. We need to be able to both describe and explain these graphs and what's happening. So let's start with part A of the graph and how we would describe that. So this is showing us that as the temperature is increasing, the rate of reaction is increasing. Now let's think about how we would explain why that is happening. Increasing the temperature increases the rate of reaction because the substrate and the enzyme both have more kinetic energy 
This means they move around faster, which will increase the number of collisions between the enzyme and the substrate, so more enzyme substrate complexes are formed. Part P on the graph is the optimum temperature. We know this because it's the peak, and so it's where the rate is happening the fastest. If you were describing the overall pattern of the graph, you'd say that as temperature increases, the rate of reaction increases until about 45 degrees, which is the optimum temperature. And then after that, as the temperature increases, the rate of reaction decreases, which is described for part C. So how do we explain that decrease in part C? Well, as the temperature increases, it's going to affect the bonds that hold the tertiary structure of the enzyme together. This is because actually there's almost too much kinetic energy and the bonds start to vibrate a lot. At high temperatures, the bonds actually break. This causes a change to the shape of the active site of the enzyme. So it is no longer complementary to the substrate. So no more enzyme substrate complexes can form. That word complementary here is really important. Same for talking about the change to the active site. That word that we can use to describe that, although we should mention both, is that the enzyme has denatured. So what we mean by denatured is that the active site has changed shape. Okay, let's look at pH now. So this is a little different, although it's still a curved shape. So at A, we have the optimum pH. This is where the rate is fastest and it's the peak of the graph. Bear in mind that this could be pH 7, which is the usual pH for most body enzymes, but it could also be lower than that. It could be pH 2, especially if we're talking about enzymes like pepsin, which are adapted to work in the stomach where there is hydrochloric acid. So their optimum pH is obviously much lower. So we don't have three different parts of the graph this time. Either side of the optimum, you're going to get a decrease in the rate of reaction. So we describe that by saying as the pH moves away from the optimum, the rate of reaction decreases. So just like temperature, we need to be able to explain this. And pH affects enzymes because either an excess of H plus or OH minus ions is gonna disrupt the ionic bonds, specifically the ionic bonds that hold the tertiary structure together. The same thing takes place, so because we're disrupting or breaking the ionic bonds holding the tertiary structure in place, it causes the active site to change shape, and therefore it's no longer complementary to the substrate, and so no ES complex is formed. So again, the enzyme has denatured. Again, be really specific with your language here, so if we're talking about pH, we have to mention ionic bonds being disrupted, we have to mention the active site changing shape, and therefore it's no longer complementary to the substrate, so no more ES complexes are going to fall. Okay, the last two factors we need to know that affect the rate of enzyme-controlled reactions are enzyme concentration and substrate concentration. These graphs look very similar to each other, but the way we explain them is slightly different. So we're going to do them together, but also talk about their differences as well. For both graphs, the gradient can be used to calculate how fast the rate of reaction is changing. The description for part A of the graph can be the same. As the concentration increases, the rate of reaction increases, and you can put as the enzyme concentration increases or as the substrate concentration increases. The explanation for part A will be different for each graph. In the enzyme concentration graph, the reason that increasing enzyme concentration increases the rate of reaction is because there are more active sites available. This means that more enzyme substrate complexes can form. For substrate concentration, the reason increasing substrate concentration increases the rate of reaction is that there's more substrate particles available. So more substrate molecules are going to collide with enzymes and therefore more enzyme substrate complexes are formed. The description for part B of the graphs is the same as well. So as the concentration increases, the rate of reaction slows down. So as enzyme concentration increases, the rate of reaction slows down. And in both cases, it's caused by a limiting factor. For enzyme concentration, the limiting factor is actually substrate concentration. So at part B on the enzyme concentration graph, there are more enzymes than substrates available. 
So increasing the enzyme concentration no longer has an effect on the rate because there's not enough substrate for it to react with. For substrate concentration, at part B, all of the enzyme active sites are occupied or they are saturated. So adding more substrate concentration won't make any difference to the rate because there are not enough enzymes for them to react with. So for part B on the substrate concentration graph, it is the enzyme concentration in the reaction that has become the limiting factor. Ouch! This is why in some videos I explain scratches. <laughs>